So, hello, and thank you very much for the honor to have me uh, as a moderator of this important panel. I would like at this point to thank Despina Travlou and the great organization of Slide 2. 2020 has been a surprise for the world, not for shipping. It has not stopped even for a minute. So I am now today here with you with a very important panel. And I would like now to welcome George Alexandratos, General Manager uh, of uh, Apollonia Alliance SA and Vice President of Hellenic Chamber of Shipping, Dimitris Fafalios, Chairman of Intercargo, President and Director of Fafalios Limited, Kostis Fragun, Founder and CEO of Franman, and President of uh, the Board of Governors of International Propeller Club, Port of Perius, Alex Hadjipateras, Executive Vice President of Dorian LPG, Semira Mispaliu, Chairperson of Helmepa, and uh, Chief Executive Officer of Guiana Shipping, and uh, last but not least, Eleni Polichronopoulou, President of Helmexpo, and uh, Business Development Manager of Erma First. I would like to welcome you all, uh, great friends. Uh, I, I, I will start al alphabetically. We have many important things to discuss, and uh, the previous panels have been very, very interesting. And uh, what I am uh, keeping from uh, the previous panel and my friend Katerina was that uh, we uh, shipping faced 10 crises in 100 years. So shipping is used in crisis and every crisis is an opportunity. So let's see what uh, uh, this, this crisis is bringing to us. I would like to start with uh, George Alexandratos. Uh, the, the, the title of the panel is a sequence of excellence, uh, ocean going shipping, the maritime cluster and the human capital. So we will try to cover uh, all of these uh, to important topics. George, there has been a big uh, debate the last few months about the EU Green Deal. Can you share with us your thoughts representing the Hellenic Chamber of any initiatives that will be possibly taken for Yes, hello, good afternoon to all of you. First of all, I have to thank very much Mrs. Despina Travlou, my friend, for her kind of it. And I would like very, very much to congratulate uh, both Despina and uh, her team for this excellent uh, webinar. We uh, just came uh, after the virtual tour, and I'm looking forward also to see the next two sessions. Also, it is an honor for me to represent the Hellenic uh, Chamber of Shipping amongst uh, those uh, uh, co-panelists, uh, which who more of them them are friend of uh, myself. Uh, they do not have only a successful track record, but they are also quality characters and personalities. And for me, that is very, very important for what we say at Greek shipping. Now, reference to your question. We at the Hellenic uh, Chamber of Shipping, uh, we're trying to overcome that amongst other initiatives by being, let's say, wholly heartily engaged the last two years in an ambitious plan uh, to open a path for opportunity for our coastal public transport services that will gradually lead uh, to green shipping and, and may provide uh, employment, we hope for that, to many as well as considerable local added value. Now, in close now cooperation with the passenger ships and the valuable of PWC, together with the National Technical University of Athens, our proposal has received enthusiastic support, I have to tell you, uh, by the Prime Minister in person, who had a very fruitful conversation with our President George Pateros, from whom you have his wonderful regards and a very good success for your seminar. Fortunately, he's at Caribbean uh, for a dry dock for his vessel. So that project has been also so not only by the Prime Minister, but from members of the Cabinet uh, and also from the European Union institutions. The business plan began with 4.5 billion of euros as a target and now is over a 9 billion project. The project is being drafted and the proof of concept is being studied. Now, the finance team will involve the European Union, the European Investment Bank, public and private capital. 
the aims are two. The first one is to renew with green, as we say. The magic word today, I think, is green and technology. We have then to make a, a big renew with the, the keyword green to the coastal fleet, not only referring to the big passenger uh, boats, but also to the small ferry boats and the small daily crafts. It is worth to mention that coastal ferries, small or big, connect 116 habitable islands where nearly 15% of the Greek population belongs to them. The second day, apart from the new of the Greek coastal fleet, of course, is to, together with the cooperation and assistance of the Greek government, the Greek shipyards, and the Greek members of the maritime cluster to assist the economy. How? We have to absorb as much as possible of the funds in order to get in to the Greek industry. And hopefully, why not? The majority of the funds will be absorbed by the Greek state and the Greek maritime cluster. So what we what we we think, what we aim is a win-win project for public transport, the island economies, the cohesion of the country, the environment, shipyards, manufacturers, and maritime service providers. Let's hope that uh, we shall achieve the sequence of excellence. Excuse me, because I had a small problem with the internet. There, there is an internet problem in the area, uh, as far from what I learned. I hope that uh, you are listening to me. Uh, I would like now to pass to Mr. Dimitris, to Dimitris Fofalios, and ask him, 2020 was a year that we all remember for various reasons. What was the impact of the pandemic in dry bulk sector in 2020, and what are your forecasts for 2021? And I thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. A warm note of thanks to Slide to Open and to Despina Travlou. Um, and I, one thing that the previous panel said about that, uh, the 10 crises, shipping is the management of change and it will always remain uh, that. Uh, shipping has remained flexible and uh, it can adapt. And uh, this is what makes it very special. But bo going back to the dry bulk sector in 2020, it started with three major questions. How would the time charters and the fuel suppliers respond to IMO 2020 low sulfur fuel regulations? What would be the impact of scrubbers and their installation on the dry bulk fleet? And could the dry bulk fleet uh, could the dry bulk market shake off its traditional first quarter freight rate doldrums? The sector has over 12,000 vessels globally, and it's the world's largest in terms of number of ships, uh, uh, dead weight and dead weight. It also serves the largest number of non-major ports, terminals and anchorages. And this poses unique problems when addressing the aforementioned questions. The first months of 2020 caused significant supply problems for very low sulfur fuel or VLSFO, even in Singapore, the world's largest bunkering hub. And many ships, many bulk ships faced fuel delivery delays uh, and many smaller time charters did not appear to fully understand the BIMCO VLSFO clause regarding their obligation to supply the correct fuels to time chartered vessels. The fuel price differential between High sulfur fuel oil and VLSFO was substantial, and this made the scrubber fitted large bulk carriers very attractive to charters. Nevertheless, the first quarter of 2020 served up the usual diet of very low freight rates to add to the owner's list of problems. And in fact, cape sizes actually traded with negative time charter rates in February. By the end of the first quarter, the impact of COVID was beginning to make itself felt to owners, especially for crew changes in Asia. Near the end of first uh, Q1, the Saudi-Russian oil price war erupted, and this was compounded by the drop in oil demand due to COVID, which drove crude prices uh, down almost to zero, and the tanker market up with spectacular freight rates. Bunker prices, however, did not dip. The second quarter, finally brought some lower bunker prices and a lower uh, price, price spread, which made the, the scrubber fitted bulkers less attractive. COVID was causing 
uh, owners, especially in the tram belt sector, uh, to deviate significantly to execute crew changes in ports such as Manila and Reunion. Traditional ports, ports such as Singapore, Hong Kong, all the Chinese ports, and many in Asia prohibited, prohibited crew changes. In the third and fourth quarters, more cargo demand from the Far East supported an increase in Panamax, Kamsar Max, and Supermax handy freight rates, with Cape size being very volatile. Uh, throughout the year, and especially from March to December, crew changes and the lack of crew access to shoreside medical facilities became a major concern, as ports worldwide treated seafarers inhumanely. Despite efforts by the shipping industry in declaring seafarers as key workers, governments were far more interested in the bulk ship's cargoes than in the seamen and women trapped on board their vessels some often more than 15 months. So for 2021, crew changes, crew access to medical care and crew vaccination issues will dominate the dry bulk cargo sector. For freight, late, for freight rates, let's hope that the promising start of the year continues to the end and beyond. I could make a prediction using supply and demand figures for 2021, but invariable, invariably an unplanned event will render the forecast inaccurate. So let's hope for a better year than 2020. Thank you. We hope for it and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's now move to Kostis Fragoulis and um, ask him that um, International Propeller Club of the United States of America is one of the oldest networking clubs in shipping worldwide. In which way our brands, International Pro Propeller Club, Port of Piraeus, contributes to the establishment of fruitful collaborations among Greek and American merchant ships? Good evening and thank you, Danae. It's great to be among uh, such a distinguished panel of friends and with you as a moderator. Um, I would like to wish uh, every possible success to the conference. Uh, the Propeller Club of Piraeus uh, was founded in uh, 1935 and is today the oldest active overseas club within the Propeller Network and the oldest uh, business club in Greece in the maritime industry. Among our main goals are the promotion and support of the world mercantile uh, shipping, the promotion of uh, Greek shipping, and of course, the bringing together of uh, US and uh, Greek uh, shipping uh, interests for a mutual benefit. Um, as you personally know very well, we act as a liaison and advisor with uh, the US Embassy on maritime uh, matters. And uh, through our close ties with other organizations in both uh, countries, like the US Coast Guard, the Ministry of uh, Maritime Affairs, the Hellenic Coast Guard, the Hellenic uh, Chamber of Shipping, um, the International uh, Propeller Club of uh, the United States, which is um, a very large network with uh, 72 chapters worldwide. Uh, we bring US and uh, Greek shipping closer. To get there, it takes a lot of uh, hard work uh, with trips, visits, meetings, events, seminars, and conferences, like the hybrid uh, forum we are organizing next May on uh, Greek-US uh, maritime relations. So, with various ways, we create a closer bond between Greek and US shipping. Uh, a good example is the collaboration we have with uh, the US Coast Guard where we cooperate uh, closely in the AMVER program, which is of uh, great importance. And uh, Greece is the number one participant uh, with over 2,000 ships annually. This is a program we have been promoting uh, since 1994 with uh, big success. And it is a great example of uh, an excellent synergy between uh, Greece and the US in the shipping uh, sector through Propeller Club. 
so yes, the strengthening of the Greek uh, and U.S. maritime relations is one of our uh, prime uh, missions. We have been uh, committed to this for a very long time, and our aim is to continue working hard uh, towards this uh, important goal and direction. Especially during crisis, uh, bring uh, uh, much bet better better results. And now I will move to yes. Alex Kajipaheras uh, and uh, to discuss about something. I mean, Dimitris Fafalios has already discussed, has already started uh, mentioning how important uh, is the human element and, of course, the problem of the, the coup changes. Neptune Declaration, signed by more than 700 organizations, outlines the main actions that need to be taken to resolve the crude change, uh, changes crisis. Dorian LPG uh, was one of the first to sign. Can you please share with us uh, its main goal? Thank you, Danai, and uh, thank you, Vespina, for having me back and to the whole slide to open team. Absolutely. So the, um, first of all, the declaration is more than a piece of paper. I'd like to say that at the outset. It's not just an agreement that was created to get headlines. As uh, Dimitri said last year, there were some real horror stories. People had 50% of their crew over a contract on their vessels. And especially in certain countries, there were ships stranded outside and still stranded outside for you know over a year, which is really inhumane and hence the human capital aspect of the title of this conference. So at the end of last year, uh, November, December, there was a steering group of companies, including many oil majors, many big cargo traders who have significantly loud voices worldwide, like Shell, BP, Cargill, Traffic Royal, who came together and sat at the same table to say, how can we allay people's concerns? How we can, can we you know, reach this goal, which is that seafarers are uh, considered priority workers, essential workers, given priority access to the vaccine, but also allowed to transport freely because they've continued to work throughout last year. Whereas, you know, myself, I've been able to stay at home or, you know, stay inside. So uh, we sat together, we sat around the table virtually, and we put four pillars up there, which was uh, key airline connectivity, which has improved substantially, I'm happy to say. Um, gold standard health protocols. This means uh, testing, basically. It means testing before departure and after arrival, having some sort of quarantine period so that, first of all, you know, the ship is like a bubble. You don't want to put someone on the ship and then impact that bubble and then somebody else is at risk, of course. So now we have, let's say, uh, three tests. So you have complete peace of mind that somebody is clear from the infection. And a key, key one was ship owners and charters working together. And we all know that on the spot voyage charters, these no crew change clauses or kicking the can down the road and saying, it's not my problem or it's somebody else owns the cargo. You know, these bad actors will be called out and they'll be called out by name. And I think they realize that and that's one of the reasons why you have now even 750 companies signed up to the declaration. Having said all of this, the end goal is for seafarers to be vaccinated. Um, it's going to take time. The latest development as of a week ago is that under the WHO COVAX program, uh, the declaration and the committee members continue to work to look at privately or as an industry body um, acquiring 900,000 to a million doses of the vaccine that could be distributed, uh, let's say, as early as second half this year, I mean, as soon as possible. And um, I think this is really, it, we can't sit still. The situation is better, for sure, uh, but, uh, you know, not time to relax yet. Yes, we, uh, we have to honor and to thank all these people that they are now on board because we are now in our houses and uh, having these very important online panels, which is great to bring together all the countries and many different people from all over the world in, in our screens. But we must not forget and we must honor every day, every day. Here in Greece, we honor through Agios Nikolaos. In other, in other places, they may honor with other ways, but we have to honor every day and thank these people for having everything in our houses. 
So yes, it's very important. It's great to hear these important measures. And of course, we will discuss more later. Semiramis, uh, on the 4th of June, 1982, the Hellenic Marine Environment Protection Association, HELMEPA, is founded. Very important step for, 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 for Greece. 40 years have passed since then, and many achievements have been accomplished. Being the 14th chairperson of HELMEPA and, uh, and a board of directors that represents the whole spectrum of maritime cluster, what are your next steps? What should we wait for? Thank you, Vanai, and it's uh, my pleasure to be here today. Um, Helmepa, as you said, was founded back in 1982 by a very visionary and forward-looking uh, group of people. They had it identified at the time that there, there was a need to educate uh, and uh, raise awareness on environmental issues uh, for the shipping, uh, for our seafarers and for the Greek uh, shipping community. And um, it was a time when uh, the regulations were still being formulated regarding pollution and environment. Uh, so Helmepa had an important role in educating, uh, uh, helping uh, uh, form these regulations, and also its mem the, the members were considered to be to have taken the moral high ground. After that, in '92, uh, Kids uh, Helmepa Junior was created, which uh, mainly uh, made an effort to educate the younger generation. I'm sure you all remember the seagull and its um, adverts on TV about uh, reducing the pollution to our beaches. Uh, today, I think Helmepa is at a similar cross crossroad. We're talking about uh, the implementation of uh, the push by the United Nations uh, of a more sustainable uh, shipping industry. I think uh, we're all uh, trying to figure out uh, what we have to do, where we are, and that's why I think Helmepa has a very important role to play and can be a leader uh, to help uh, the maritime uh, industry adapt to these requirements. The thing is that we need to uh, realize that as a human race, we can't continue to do business and live the same way that we've been doing all these years at the detriment of the future generations. We need to change and we need to do that together collaboratively, collaboratively and uh, in synergies. Uh, and this is what the Helmepa is here to do. It's here to educate and change the culture and the mentality of uh, how we've been thinking so far. It's easy as long as we decide to do it. Uh, and I think that's what COVID has proved to everyone, that there's nothing impossible as long as we all decide to work in the same direction. So basically the three main things that we've been focusing on at the moment is um, mainly making Helmepa more inclusive, attracting more people, attracting the maritime cluster, not only its seafarers and its vessels and the ship managing companies. We've reduced our fees in order to attract the sh all the shipping industry, uh, attract all the ships, and also um, promote uh, the membership of associate members and supporters. Um, another thing that we've decided to do is to uh, attract the younger generation again. Once again, we need to speak their language. We need to use social media. And we need to have the younger generation as our uh, ambassadors. Vanai, is everything OK? OK. Um, Okay, and uh, thirdly, the other thing we need to do is so what we were trying to broaden the seminars. Uh, COVID re made us realize that uh, uh, we can use the digital technology, something that uh, we were all scared to do before, but basically we've managed to reach with our training seminars, uh, our seafarers in uh, foreign countries such as uh, Manila and India. We've, tra we've made our uh, training seminars in English and we're attracting uh, more people, which is uh, very important for us. So what you should be waiting for uh, next? Well, we have a very strong board of directors. Uh, it's inclusive. It has 40% women. It has all ages. And I think uh, we're trying to revitalize Helmepa. We're building on its legacy and on its founder's vision, but we're adapting it to the needs of today. We're listening carefully to what uh, the young generation needs. 
And I think it's the time for Helmeta to shine once again. It's very really important. And at this point, I would like to say that we all remember that for the last 40 years, we're hearing no more plastic in the seas. So yes, maybe now we say plastic free, but uh, Helmepa uh, has taught to us since we were very uh, we were very young that we must take care of our seas and our beaches. So it's very important that you continue this very very important role of Helmepa. And thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to pass to Eleni Polychronopoulou uh, to ask her. We're all aware that Greece is the first ship owning power globally. However, there is a great potential ahead for Hellenic Marine Equipment Manufacturers, Hemexpo. How can we achieve to install Greek equipment on board as many vessels in as many vessels as possible? Thank you, Danai, and thank you, Despina. I wish you success to this very uh, interesting and um, important uh, um, conference. So, yes, uh, there are actually um, uh, a lot of uh, changes happening in the Hellenic marine equipment um, environment. Um, over the past years, we have seen a, a very big increase in uh, Greek equipment being installed on board ships in existing ships, but also in uh, new buildings, but uh, not also only Greek-owned, but uh, also internationally owned vessels. And that has been a very, very big uh, success for us. We are very proud of that. So first of all, we are waiting for Mr. Alexandratos to proceed with the project and uh, include all the marine uh, equipment made in Greece in, uh, in the project, of course. But uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we as manufacturers, we have an obligation to understand the needs of our customers and what is coming ahead. We need to understand uh, the digitalization um, challenge. We need to understand the decarbonization challenge. And we need to work towards uh, this direction to offer the proper products and be extremely competitive and uh, extremely high level, as is uh, the Greek shipping industry. So. Uh, in this respect, um, we have already signed agreements with the Space um, Association of Greece and the Association of High Technology Companies of Greece. Uh, we have an MOU in order to uh, benchmark and um, use uh, these uh, high-end technologies in the marine industry because they are already developed in Greece and it's very, very important to pivot them in the, in the shipping industry. And actually, this is the only way we can be competitive, we don't have the heavy industry in Greece, we do not manufacture engines, we do not manufacture diesel generators, but we do manufacture components which are important for, uh, for the vessel. So um, we are, uh, we are uh, hoping for uh, the support of uh, the Greek state in, uh, in our uh, efforts, as well as the European Union. And actually what is happening now on the European uh, level is that uh, there is a great pressure for uh, European marine equipment manufacturers and European shipyards um, to promote the industry in the Commission and uh, to be able to have uh, uh, the marine equipment and the shipbuilding industry reinstated as a very um, important sector for, uh, for Europe and take measures against uh, what is happening in other parts of the world, which can be very detrimental for the European uh, for the European economy, so there is a lot of nice things uh, coming um, for the Hellenic marine equipment manufacturers and exporters, and hopefully for uh, for the shipping industry. We, we want to be close to the shipping industry. We want to be in a constant dialogue with the shipping industry to understand the needs and to be able to offer the correct products. Uh, can, can bring many solutions to many problems and uh, uh, we must all admit that even European Union is giving a lot of attention to shipping. They have now, they have understood many, uh, some, a few years now that uh, shipping is not only fishery, shipping is the trading, is the 90% of the worldwide trading and Greeks are number one and we're very, very proud to have also Greeks leading important worldwide organizations. And like now we have Mr. Farfalios and Peter Cargo. It's very, very important, a great honor for this, uh, for this country. And now to wrap up, 
uh, in the last uh, seven, eight minutes that we have, I would like to uh, uh, to go back to, to, to George. For, for what that Eleni has told about, uh, let's let's sit all together in the table because now I think that the table is bigger and uh, can have all of us. Uh, so what you, you 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 could say about maritime alas and what Eleni is suggesting to be all together? Thanks again. I'll try to be very short as much as possible for the for the next one two minutes. I have to tell that uh, it's, it's by all means, all, all today panelists, uh, uh, I, depending on what uh, they were the cons of the speech, there was one common word for everybody, which was synergy. So as a, let me allow an expression in Greek, to for me. For me today is joint growth. For me today is to have a, a same aims, to, to have, a, to, to understand and uh, make uh, correct synergies uh, efficient synergies uh, and uh, maritime alas at least the three main organizations the union of greek ship owners evep and the Hellenic chamber of shipping finally reached an agreement and create the maritime alas if the maritime alas at the end of the day will succeed or not it does not depend by the three unions it depends by all of us if we believe all of us in one to the other i have i'm a bit upset and i made a, a note down here to compare what's happening to other countries. Just have only one thing in our mind, okay? Okay, Greece today owns close to 22% of the world fleet, we are number one, and we owe more than 50% from the European fleet, own fleet. Okay, what is now, what we're take? So this country now tries and to, to develop the maritime cluster and who who disputes that this maritime cluster will be useful for all of us here so I, I'll, I'll give you just a small in order to conclude very shortly what's happening now for example there are maritime clusters uk norway denmark italy singapore but just compare the fleet the percentage that they have okay and i will tell you for in uk for example the pure shipping activities contributed to, G to the GVA in 2019, I have the last data, about 15 billion, billion, while the total direct contribution of the maritime sector was about 47 billion. The indirect was 39 billion, I'm speaking for British pounds, and they induced 22.6 billion. Total, 110 billion. Unfortunately, as I told you, this is not the case in our country. So, to conclude, and uh, leave also to, to hear time to hear the, the useful uh, positions of the other co-panelists. I, I think that we need now to join forces to, uh, to assist any campaigns for the international maritime community to familiarize with the Greek maritime industry services, learn, learn what's happening in the cargo, let's what's happening in propeller, let's what's happening in Hemexpo, in Helmepa, in the Dorian shipping company, for you and I, that you are the co-founder of the Yes Forum that promotes the, the, the shipping to the next generation. Let's assist each other and let's focus and aim that the new opportunities will be the accomplishments of our vision to steer the non-shipping members of the cluster to a wider horizon. Many congratulations. Thank you very much for being one of the panelists today. We are always managing to wrap up everything because we have only one minute to say to say goodbye. So Dimitri Kosti, Alex, Miramis, and Ellen and Eleni, can I have one last uh, word? Uh, what, uh, how to close this very uh, very nice bl first blue day because it is a blue day and our discussion. Uh, uh, Dimitri, what we take from uh, uh, from you a positive message to wrap up? Well, the, the, the positive is that um, we are making uh, progress on the crew changes, like uh, Alex uh, very uh, uh, said. Uh, we still need to work harder. Unfortunately, uh, despite efforts of everybody, including uh, the Neptune Declaration members, we still uh, our seafarers are still not key workers in practice. And uh, this has brought us a big problem that our maritime sphere of influence 
uh, has turned out to be ineffective in this crisis. And the only way we're going to solve this, I'm sorry to say, is by a group of prime ministers and presidents getting together. No, uh, we have tried everything. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's, it has to be solved at an incredibly high level. And the, and the marine industry is usually an industry of actions, a lot of actions and very few words. Uh, this time, we're going to have to go really, really very, very high to solve the crew change uh, crisis because I'm sure that the, uh, the, the, uh, we have failed our crew uh, in certain situations, but we must never give up. And that's what we have to do. Stick together and never give up. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Kosti. Uh, very briefly, I would like to say that I'm very optimistic about the future of Greek shipping. And um, also, I, I believe that we are uh, very close in seeing a revival in uh, the shipyard business in Greece. Uh, we saw some uh, important uh, U.S. investments happening uh, the last uh, two years, which uh, will continue happening um, in the next years. And um, we, we, we are happy to always to see the Greek ship owning uh, uh, market being number one in the world. But I, I believe that we can also see the shipping industry, the, uh, the shipyards, the ship repairing, the ship building, evolving, progressing and happening because it's something that has to happen uh, in Greece. Uh, we, cannot not, we cannot only be number one uh, as ship owners, we can also have a full uh, sh uh, shipping industry in this country. And I'm very optimistic about uh, this, and I, I see this happening. All together, more shipyards. Alex, vaccine, a lot of vaccinations. Many yeah, I mean, I'm, I think that the vaccine is the ultimate uh, solution. I mean, hopefully the prime ministers come together, but I think the vaccine might happen before then. And I think it's all about education. Because as you see with AstraZeneca today, there's a lot of fear mongering going around. So I think we have to educate people about the safety of the vaccines. And, and that's my kind of sum summary. Very right. Samira, miss? Uh, yes, and I think you were right. Uh, Helmepa has been uh, promoting sustainability well before the actual phrase sustainability development was uh, introduced by the United Nations. I, I strongly believe that Helmepa is a platform for the shipping cluster to develop and to reach their uh, uh, development goals. We are here to help you. Uh, we see this as a partnership because if we want to do things and change them, we need to work together. We mentioned that before. And uh, we welcome everyone uh, in uh, Helmepa and have a look at our website. And uh, I might be making a few calls uh, to our panelists asking them to and support they, Helmet. <laughs> very important. And last but not least, Eleni, once there is a will, there is a way. We can make it happen. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so, Miramis, we are already members, so you will not be calling me, I know. So, but it's, it would be a good idea to make him Expo a member, by the way. So, George, uh, I just want to tell you that uh, the marine equipment in Greece is, uh, has a contribution of uh, 350 million for uh, 2020. And uh, with a multiplier of 1.7, we have a, a very, very strong um, presence now uh, in the industry. But our goal is to go to 1.5 billion. So we are ready to work together to make uh, cost efficient products, energy efficient products, innovative uh, products for uh, the Greek uh, shipping industry, but uh, the international shipping industry as well. Many, many thanks to all of you. George, Dimitri, Kosti, Alex, Semira, Miss Eleni. A big thanks from my heart. A big thanks to Slide to Open for being all together uh, today at this important discussion. See you all soon. I hope, I hope face to face. Let's, let's make it happen too. <laughs> Goodbye. Good night to everybody. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye.